for his presence in this place today. Amen. The scripture we read this morning from Ezra chapter 9, verse 8. I'm going to read that again one more time. Ezra chapter 9, verse 8. Again, from the King James Version, it just says, And now for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape, to give us a peg in his holy place that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. This is an Old Testament prophet talking about grace. That God did show grace prior to Jesus coming on the cross and making that the new dispensation. What we want to focus on here is when it says to leave us a remnant to escape. Today, we're going to talk about the remnant. The remnant. Amen. The definition of the word from the from the uh, Strong's Concordance for the word remnant, it's a Hebrew word pronounced sheir, sheirith. Sheirith. It's, it's spelled S H E R I Y T H. It's a Hebrew word, and it means the remainder means the residual or the rest what's left over a remnant when we read in chapter 9 it says it allowed a remnant to escape a remnant isn't known as being a, a big portion a remnant isn't known as being the even the main representation the main portion of whatever it is that we're talking about. We're talking about um, in home decorating carpet samples called remnants. <laughs> or in clothing, if you have a, a piece of a, of, of a garment, it's a remnant. It's a representation. It's a small portion. So Ezra, where it says he allowed a, a remnant to escape, he allowed a small portion, he allowed the remainder or the residual or the rest to escape so that their eyes could be enlightened. A couple chapters forward from that, Ezra chapter 7. And verse 10, it's talking about the prophet Ezra. Prophet to the nation of Israel. During this particular time, where they've been held in captivity, and this is where the word says the God allowed a remnant to escape. And Ezra was the, um, the prophet to the, the nation of Israel during this time. The remnant is a representation of the whole. But in the word, where it talks about a, a remnant here, the residual or what's left is the residual or the remnant of the greater the faithful days of the nation of Israel. Not the rebellious and stiff-necked nation of Israel that continually walked away from God. The, 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 the nation of Israel that, that constantly turned to other gods during times of prosperity and then when they went into captivity or when they found themselves in bondage or when they found themselves in a hard place then they would turn back to God. The remnant that God allowed to escape is the, the faithful remnant. The diligent remnant. The representation of the, the greater days, the faithful days, 
of the nation of Israel. But the faithfulness of the remnant, Ezra is a representation of that representation, if you will. What were the qualifications of being a part of the remnant? What was it that made the remnant the remnant? You have the nation of Israel as a whole who turned away from God. They were constantly following after other gods. When times of prosperity would come, whatever land they were in, they would turn to those gods. Never mind that God had previously delivered them from <laughs> a bondage. Never mind that he had delivered them from Egypt. Never mind that he, he brought them out of that 400 year captivity. Israel showed a constant penchant, if you will, to, to, to not believe in God, to not trust God. For even in that the, 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 the initial deliverance out of Israel, the first conflict that they came to, not even hours after having been delivered, the first conflict they came to, they turned on God. All right, all right. Having recently been delivered, 400 years of captivity, going away. You leave out of the most powerful nation that there is right now to have you held captive, and you have all their gold. He gave you all their gold. You didn't leave empty-handed. You didn't leave with what you came in with. You left with all of their gold. And all you had to do was ask. There was no fighting involved. There were no lawsuits involved. There was nothing like that. You just knocked on the door. Um, can I get all your gold? Yes, and they handed it over. This is a powerful deliverance. You think that that would stick with them for a while, but as soon as they came to the, the, the edge of the Red Sea and they knew that Pharaoh's armies were bearing down on them, now it's like, whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, God, did you bring us out here to die? Short memory. That's ADD right there. <laughs> attention deficit disorder. They weren't paying attention. They forgot that quick just how God had delivered them. But that's the pattern for Israel. Rebellion. Hard times. Bondage. Slavery. Then they repent. Then they call out to God. Then he delivers them. Okay, they're here. They rebel. <laughs> Bondage. Slavery. Then they repent. God delivers them. Then they're in a time of prosperity. In that time of prosperity, they forget, oh, we don't need God. We can go do what we feel like doing. So then they come back into rebellion, back into bondage, back into slavery. Oh, man, this is not good. We forgot God. Now, oh, God, we're sorry. We, can you deliver us out of this? Let's back up. So they're on that roller coaster. They're on that constant roller coaster. The remnant that we're talking about here, the representation that God allowed to escape so that he could enlighten their eyes, the remnant is of the faithful Israel. The remnant is the ones that, that once they get into the bondage, then they realize that, you know what? This is not where we're supposed to be. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. We need to get back to what our roots are. We need to get back to the one who, who really loves us, to the one who's really going to watch out for us. That's the remnant that God is looking for. That's the, the cutout, the representation that God is talking about here when he's talking about the remnant. And here's um, chapter 7, verse 10. And this is the only verse we're going to cover today. Amen? So we may not be here that long. <laughs> verse 10 of chapter 7. It says, For Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. Amen? All right, then. Amen. Just, uh, just one verse today. But three powerful points within that verse. Three powerful points in that verse. It says that Ezra 
As he spoke to the remnant, he represented the remnant. He represented what the remnant was and needed to be before God. For Ezra, he had prepared his heart. He prepared his heart. He didn't just decide in his mind that he was going to go do something and then set out to, you know, boom, I'm going to do this, thinking about it, bang, and then set out. He, it says he prepared his heart. He got himself ready deep down on the inside. He, he considered all things. He, he, got, he prepared his heart to do these things. He didn't prepare his flesh. He didn't prepare his mind. He prepared his heart to do these things. What did he prepare his heart to do? He prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. So he prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. He's prepared to learn what it is the Lord is saying. He prepared himself to, to, to seek what the Lord has already said. There's what God has said. There's what God is saying. He's a prophet of the Lord. So he, he hears from God himself to speak to the nation of Israel that which God would have him to speak. But there's also the word already that is established, the law, the commandments. He prepared his heart to seek the law, to find out what it is that it says in there. What is God's word saying to us? What does it mean? What is God, what is the message that God is trying to get to us? He prepared his heart to seek what it is God was saying. But it wasn't enough to just seek the law. Ezra, he prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. And to do it. He sought to he sought to find out what it is that God was saying. And he sought to do it. He knows that God's word. He knows what the Ten Commandments are. He knows what, what's, what's written in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He was seeking to see what the Lord was saying in all of that. Because the word of God is full of God's love for us. It's full of God's promises for us. It's full of who God is. But it's also full of instructions for us. It's full of, of our B-I-B-L-E basic instructions before leaving earth. It's full of instructions. It's our owner's manual. Amen. Psalm 119, you don't have to turn there, but it's the longest chapter of any book in the Bible. There are 176 verses in the 119th division of Psalm. And it talks about God's word and it refers to it in all of these different ways. It says, he calls God's word the way, the law. He calls it his testimonies, his precepts, his statutes, his commandments, his judgments. All these different things reference the word of God. So Ezra is seeking the law of the Lord. He's seeking God's way. He's seeking his precepts. He's seeking his statutes. He's seeking his laws. He's seeking his judgments. He's seeking whatever there is in the word of God. That there, if there's anything that God's word is saying or telling me to do, that's what I need to be doing. That's what I need to be doing. He's not concerned with the, the law of the land per se. He has to obey the law of the land. Yeah, he does. Unless that law of the land contradicts with what the word of God says. We have examples in the Bible of that. But Ezra, the prophet, the prophet who hears from God, is not sitting back doing whatever he wants until God feels like speaking to him and then, okay, now it's time for me to, now I, I, should, I should begin living, you know, doing what God says. Now it's, it's that time. No. Ezra has dedicated his life. So like we just say, I give myself away. Ezra gave himself away to God. 
allow himself to be used by God. But he didn't just want to be just sit back and wait for God to, to, to okay, speak this, go speak this unto the people. Ezra wanted to seek the Lord. He wanted to find out what it was God was saying. He didn't want to wait you know, for God to speak. He wanted to press. He wanted to know what it was. He wanted to open those scrolls and scriptures. He wanted to, to get in there and read and dig and see what it was that God was saying. And he was seeking. Seeking is an act. It's an active act. And seeking is not a passive verb. Seeking is an active verb. Seek. You're looking for it. You're digging for something. When you're seeking something, Get up in the morning and get ready to go to work and you can't find your keys. You seek those keys. You don't sit, turn on the TV and wait for hope some of the keys will just pop up anywhere. You know, I'll, I'll just watch TV until I remember where I put them. No, that's not good enough. That's not going to get you to work on time. It's not going to get you to work at all. Amen. Action. You have to act. There's an act involved. There's a responsibility. You are seeking. He seeked. He sought the law of the Lord. And to do it. That's the other side of the coin. Flip it up in the air, flip a coin, there's always two sides to the coin. This coin, you flip it in the air, you prepare your heart, you prepare his heart to seek the Lord, and he prepared his heart to do what it was. What the word said. He prepared his heart to do what the word said. And this is so, so deep. He did it only because he knew that when he dug into God's word, he wasn't just going to find all the, 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 the beautiful accolades unto us and, and all the, oh, I love you so much, and oh, you are my you, you, you are my chosen people, and I love you. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, if you turn back to me, I will forgive you. This and that. He, he knows that in God's word, he's saying there's things that you have to do as well. There's things that I need you to do if you're my child. There's things that I need that I need for you to do if you say you love me. And it's not a matter of uh, things that we do to, to check off a list so we can say, okay, we sought the Lord today. We're good until tomorrow. Or man, I gotta I didn't do all of this yesterday, so I gotta do it twice today. So I'll do uh, you know, I'll read the word twice, I'll pray twice as long, and then um, I'll watch the TV and channel for two hours tonight instead of one hour. No. He was seeking the Lord. He prepared his heart to do all of this. Whatever he found in the word to do, he's prepared his heart to do it. He prepared his heart to do it. Whatever God's word said he needed to do, he was going to do that. He didn't read in there that God's word said to do this. And he started figuring out, well, that must mean that I only really have to do this. Or God didn't really mean for me to, to do it every day. Or, or really didn't mean for me to commit my whole life to this. But I'll make room in somewhere you know, during my day to try to, to do what God's word says. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on my, my list of things to do. Because I'm a busy person. I got all of these other different things I got going on in my life. You know, I'm a prophet of God. That's not. <laughs> but the prophet of God spoke who God spoke through to the people of to, to the people to the children of Israel. The prophet of God sought to he, he, he sought out what was in the law of the word. He purposed in his heart that he was going to do whatever it was he read in there. He wasn't the one to sit back and say, okay, I'm good. God is speaking through me. I'm good. Y'all need to make sure y'all are doing what God said for y'all to do. Okay. So y'all, y'all, okay, you, God said do that. You're not doing it. You better watch out. God has warned you. He didn't want to be that guy. He wanted to be the guy who was living. Amen. He wanted to be the guy. He, 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 this is God speaking directly to him. You're receiving the word directly to God. And the word that God put through the prophets is usually a word of warning. It's usually a word to the people that says, you know what? You're a stiff-necked people. You're a hard-headed people. And I need you to do what my word says. And if you don't do what my word says, then this is going to happen to you. But he also used the, the prophets to speak blessings and say, if you do what my word says, this will happen to you. I will bless you in this way. Ezra wanted to be a doer of the word. He sought the Lord. He wanted to dig and he, he didn't want to be the one digging the hole. You find that treasure and you just put it up on the, on the shelf. Oh, it looks so nice. 
doesn't look nice. I've done it. I found all of that. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, isn't that in that crazy? Isn't that in that? You know, isn't that so nice? And that's so that's so lovely. He wanted to be the one. If they ain't got treasure, you find all them coins in there. You want to do something with the coins. <laughs> you, you want to spend the best. You want to do something with those coins. But then today, he didn't want to seek what the law said and not do it. He didn't want to basically, in essence, go spend four years in college seeing what knowledge he could gain, then graduate, and then just have a diploma hanging on his wall while he sat doing nothing. Again, what sense does that make? None. How many people have done that? Just go to college just so he can say, you know what? And the, the purpose, I, I went to college for all these years. I, I studied hard and I graduated summa cum laude, man. I graduated with all these honors, you know, had a gold robe and everything. And I got this nice big diploma with all the fancy letters and all that. Isn't that diploma nice? That diploma is not what he was working for. It's not what you were working for. You were working for the knowledge and the skills that it took to be able to do whatever it was you were training to do. An archaeologist, an architect, a lawyer, a doctor, uh, uh, something else that needs a degree. You know, all of these things are a different thing. You go, you go and get and attain all that knowledge. Ezra sought to do what he found in God's word. He purposed in his heart that he was going to seek the, the, the law of the Lord. He purposed in his heart that he was going to do the law. Do what he found written in the law of the Lord. He didn't stop there. It could have. He, he would have been just okay. Because it's not enough just to seek the Lord. It's not just enough to seek what, what's in his word. And just find out and know exactly what it says. Memorize it to know, you know, so that whenever the time comes, you can, you can quote, the, quote the scripture. That's beneficial. But he sought, he purposed in his heart that he was going to seek it, find out what it said, and that he was going to do it. And even if he stopped to just do it, you do the word, you do doing what the word says. You know what? That's, 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 that's okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. You're doing what the word says. But he also purposed in his heart that he was going to teach the statutes and the judgments in Israel where he was, to the people that God had called him to, he was going to teach the statutes and the judgments. We go to Psalm 119, right there, statutes and judgments are in the, the, the list of things that God's word is referred to as in there. He's going to teach what he has learned and been practicing. He's going to teach it now in Israel. He's going to teach it to the people, to the children, to the ones whom God has called him to. He not only saw it, he knows what it says. He's, he's, he's practicing, he's doing it, so he knows that it works, and he knows that it's good. Now he's going to teach it to those around him. He didn't purpose in his heart. He did, look at the order of this. He didn't purpose first that he was going to teach it. Then come back and decide, well, I need to do it first. But before I can do it, I need to learn what it says. He got it all in order. First, he sought the law. He sought to find out what was in the law. Second, he purposed to do it. He purposed in his heart to do it. Thirdly, he purposed in his heart that he was going to teach it. Teach it before others. He sought it for himself. Purpose that he was going to make it a part of his life. Not just make it a part of his life, living it in front of others, but that he was going to teach it to those around him. Purpose that in his heart. This is what the remnant, this is represent, representative of the remnant of Israel. The land that Israel was going into, the, 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 the places that God brought the children of Israel to. We're all foreign places. We're all places that worship other gods. He didn't bring them to uh, heaven. <laughs> he didn't bring them to the, the, the new Jerusalem. He didn't bring them to the place where everybody was already worshiping God. He didn't bring them to that place. He 
brought them to places where nobody knew God, where nobody respected God. He brought them to places where they worshiped multiple gods. He brought them to places where they, 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 they had no regard for Jehovah, for Allah, Father, where they had no regard for their God. He brought them to all these different places. But Ezra, representation of the remnant, the purpose that he was going to teach the Israelites. Teach them. Give them examples. Breaking it down. Making it so that they can understand it. Helping them when they have problems with it. Not manipulating. Not being dogmatic about it. jobs in the land is that of a teacher. Military is necessary for the defense of your country. Doctors are necessary for healing of the sick. Okay, accountants, all these, everybody's job, you know, has a certain amount of importance, but the teachers. The teachers, those who are in knowledge, that's in those. When you think of teachers, we think teachers of, of our youth. Amen. Because the youth are coming up, they're going to be the next generation. They're going to be the next carriers of the purpose. The, the next uh, leaders, future leaders, teaching. As we're purposed in this heart, the angels are going to teach the statutes to Israel. Not the way that you just show somebody something to send them on their way. But he's going to teach it to them in a way. Because he saw that he knew what he said, that he was living it. He was going to teach them that. How to live it. How to do it. How to seek it. God's statutes and God's judgments. The remnant. The thing about the remnant, the remnant is never very big. The remnant is never very big. When you get a sample of uh, material, in a dress or a suit or something they when they show you samples of material it's, it's, it's really not it's not very big they don't drag out a whole roll of this put it in front of you and roll it out so that you can feel it they bring out a little sample so you can see what it looks like so you can feel so you can hold it up against another little piece and see you know how they go together a remnant is never very big a remnant is never very big a remnant that you know what to expect from the whole thing. The remnant. The remnant of God's people. The remnant of God's people. The faithful. Those who purpose in their hearts to seek God's law and to do it and to teach it to those around. The remnant of God's people are not a representation of a representation of what the, 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 the church the worldwide body of Christ ought to be you are also a representation of God's kingdom that is coming. You are a representation of God's people that are coming. The church, the remnant that God has placed here in this place, the, God, the remnant that God has placed in the land. If we seek the law of the Lord, if we seek God's word, seek what it is that God's word is saying, not just by coming to church and hearing it preached, that's part of it. But also seeking him in our own in our own time. Because the two go hand in hand. We read in our private time to see what God is saying to us. And then we come together in church and God will affirm that. Amen. Or he'll give us a word in church that we can go study on our own and God will give us a deeper revelation. All right, all right. Amen. But the two go hand in hand. Right, right. Seek, seek the law of the Lord. Yes. Get in his word and see what it's saying. Don't separate one from the other because that's not what God has called us to do. He wants us to study to show ourselves a workman approved unto God. Not a student approved unto God, but a workman approved unto God. A workman proves himself by his work. A workman approves himself by the work. In the military, in the Air Force, to get promoted, you have to take a test. And that shows how well you know 
your job, how well you've read the books, how well you've uh, studied the, 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 the material and everything, but when you, okay, you make that next rank and you get thrown out there, now you have to do the work. If you can't do it, all you've proved is that you can take a test. You haven't shown yourself a workman approved unto anyone. Amen? We study to show ourselves a workman approved unto God. So we seek the law of the Lord. Purpose in our hearts that we're going to do what the word says. What does the word say? What is the greatest commandment that God gives? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. What the second is like it? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love. Love our enemies. Love one another. That's pretty much everybody around us. God's calling card is the love that we have for one another. All men will know that you are my disciples with the love that you have one for another. The remnant is going to love. The remnant is going to demonstrate love. We talked last week that love is patient and it's kind. Love is long-suffering. Love gives the benefit of the doubt. Love does not fail. Love does not pump itself up. Love does not be behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. If God's people, if the remnant, if the remnant are loving to one another, if we're doing all those things before the Lord, that would put that, but you know, before the Lord, doing, living what the, the word that we're seeking and find it, because we don't seek God's word and not find answers. <laughs> You don't see if you if you if you have a desire if you're seeking if you want to know who God is, read the Word. Read the Word. Go to where He is. Don't go to where He's not. Probably not at the library. Unless two or three people are gathered there in His name. If you're not a part of that, you 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 you're not in God. He's really He's there. His presence is there. But His manifested presence in our lives. We have to go where he is. We have to go where he is. President Obama got inaugurated for the second time. Anybody that wanted to see him went to Washington, D.C. They went to that parade route where they could put eyes on him, to where they could see him, to where they knew he was going to be. If you wanted to see the president on inauguration day, if you wanted to see him live, nobody flew to Atlanta and stood on Peachtree Road, Peachtree Avenue, Boulevard Street, whatever it was, waiting for the president to come by. If they did, they were alone. If they did, they were alone. By the same token, if we're seeking God, we have to go where He is. We have to invite Him to where we are because He inhabits the praises of His people. He inhabits the praises of His people. The word says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So anything that has breath can praise God, but He only inhabits the praises of His people. Get to where He is. That's the word of God. Purpose in your heart to do the word of God. Practice it. Purpose in our heart that we're going to teach God's word wherever we go. Be a light shining in a dark place. Let God's love show. Let God's love flow through us so that men will see that and know that God, there is a God. That God is real. Amen. And that he inhabits the praise of his people. That he is in the midst where his people gathered in his name. Amen. 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 So look around. Look around. This is not you. This is not big. We're a remnant. We're a remnant. The remnant represents the, the big picture. The whole piece of cake, if you will. The remnant. The remnant is not to be discouraged. The remnant ought to be encouraged. The remnant ought to be encouraged because the remnant is what is presented before the, before before prospective customers. I want to know, you know, what this piece of cloth looks like. Let me bring you a, a remnant. That's your that's your representation. The remnant is what God puts before people to show. The remnant is God's example of the kingdom that is to come. The remnant is God's representation. God does things with the remnant. God does things with the piece that he carves out. If you don't believe me, ask Gideon what he did with his remnant. <laughs> what he was able to do with his remnant. Ask, ask Abram when he took his 318 servants 
So he had way more. But he took his remnant and defeated an army of four cities that had defeated an army of five cities. That's even what a remnant can do. So you look around and see the remnant. Be encouraged. Amen. 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 That's the word for the day. Yes, because he is worthy. It's only a worthy God that can take a, a remnant, a small portion.